So I've got some code I shared out there. And if you've, if you've done a little bit of coding, you'll, you'll probably look at the sample and, I'll, and go, oh, this looks a lot like Java. And I, in this little world here, I'm just going to get rid of the comments. Make sure I set this to C++. So that was up there. Got rid of the comments. I'm going to collapse this. Grab my mouse. And within main here, just to make sure it works, I'm just going to do a quick run. I should see hello world show up down here. So to do a countdown, we need, need to initialize a value first. So we need a variable. Do you have a preferred name for a variable name? Um, lives. Lives? Uh, okay, sure. Yeah. So um, since this is going to be a countdown timer for uh, a rocket, you could use something that makes more sense than lives like timer or countdown or C down. You could use something like X in this example. It doesn't matter. But mm -hmm. try to get try to get used to thinking about what's the application for this variable or function and what's a good descriptive name. So t minus, I put a value in there like ten. That needs to be what kind of data? Integers. So yeah. Be, yeah. So we can set that up now. I could just I could have while, which is a condition. Okay, well. Uh, Negative one is greater than T minus. And then everything inside of, if I put a semicolon, that would be a mistake. It's going to, it's going to actually end my loop. So a lot of people like to put that open brace up there. So they remember, oh yeah, I know semicolon. And then I could do something like C out, or in this case, I'd like you to use printf because it'll get you used to printing out and format it. And you could do it like more formal, like T minus. And then you want to say in the format of an integer, down a line there. Let me get my big fat head out of the way there. Now, outside of the quotes, but still within the parentheses, you need to tell it what you're going to print there. And that's going to be our variable. It's going to end with a semicolon. Now, if I run this now, it's going to print 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. I haven't changed the value. So the right. thing I need, which is typically in, in purple, would be a way to make that value go down by one. Do you know a command that would make a integer value go down by one? Would it be like minus minus? Yes. In C++, we can do T minus, and then this is an operator. It says take one away from it. Now, instead of saying hello world, um... I might want to actually say blast off, right? Just because it might make more sense. So. And if I wanted to be really clever, I could make it look like a rocket going up. Like I could just put in backslash N after every letter. So if I run this now, Oh, yeah, I, apparently I've got a, a space somewhere or something. Oh, see that T minus has actually got the minus in it. Gotta it's get also that. in the minus minus, so yeah, you're right. in your math. Thank you. Appreciate that. So there's my blast off, which has got a space in front of it, which doesn't makes it look a little ugly. But let's see, did I print out this? It was it was in a while statement. You were doing a uh, negative one is greater than uh, t minus, so it wouldn't be less than. Yeah. Well, negative one is. Yeah. I flip this around. Thank you. You're I'm welcome. gonna get rid of that space before the b because it just just doesn't quite look as well as it could. So I had that flipped. There we go. So there's T minus 10, 9, all the way down to 0. And then it says blast off, just like a rocket going up. So this is a, just an example of a while. And the next loop we'll talk about is a do while. And the only difference is we move the while statement down here and we put the word do up, up above. So if I change this to the word do, and then I grab the while statement, I can cut it from here. 
put that down here. But the weird thing is, now because the braces are above it, I'm, I am going to put a semicolon here. That's the same thing. And if I run it now, I'm, I'm using the other loop called a do while. It's really almost the same. The third type, the for loop, actually uses a combination of this line, the while statement. I'm going to put that up here, along with this statement, which is the change. So I'm going to move that over here. And it puts them all on one line. So we add the word for int t minus equals 10. We get rid of the word while because it's just a condition. And then we have the change at the end. We don't want a semicolon there. And that's a loop where everything's on one line. And since you've done a little bit of programming, I did this a little faster. That plus you've got a meeting coming up in 10 minutes or so. So yeah. I, I like this format better because I've got my initialization, my condition, and my change all together on one line, one stop shopping. I don't have to look up and down and remember where it goes. So would it count down? Would it take away uh, one, like, so be 10? So would it do the math first, then print it out? Or would it uh, print it off, then do the math? So it does it first and then comes back. I can show you a trick that changes this, but let's let me show you what it looks like. So we'll start at 10 because it's going to print it first. So I'm going to go to the top to show you the 10s there. I'm going to show you a trick. In C++, which you can do, it's called a prefix operator. I can move the minus minus so that it's before the variable. And what that does is it says, before you do anything else, take one away from it. Okay. So, so watch this version. If I go to the top now, oh, I expected that to work differently. Well, it got digested okay by C++, but it did not do it. It did. All right. You know what it is? It's only when it's in the middle of like a, a calculation for the order of operations. So it would be like doing an extra set of parentheses around it. But in this instance, because the for structure is a control structure, it's still going to do everything below and then come back and process that. Okay. Here's another fun thing you can do. Is you can actually have this change, this minus minus. I can put that. That's where you do it right here. Minus minus there. And remember, these are optional. So I can get rid of this. So, but, but now I no longer have everything on one line. Now I'm just showing off what you can do in C++. Yeah. So if I do this, just to show off what C++ can do, it should be, it's going to do, go to the top here, nine. That's what I forgot okay. to do. So this is actually saying, take one away from it before you do anything else with it. Now to make 10 show up again, just again, first for demoing what C++ does, if I move it after, it should print it first and then take one away. Now I should see 10 in the list. There's the 10 at the top there. So now I want, yeah. you, to, I want you to play with this. I've actually saved this code uh, out there. It's actually, there's a link for you on the game programming drive, or sorry, the Google Classroom, I should say that will give you samples of all three of these loops. I'd like you to play with them a little bit. Set it so it starts at 1,000 and counts down. It's just as easy. Um, play with it so the blast off prints out a little picture of a rocket if you want to. Um, break it. And if you get error codes, let me know what your questions are. OK. OK? I can let you go. You got class. OK, thank you. You bet. Have a good one. You too. Hey, Malcolm, uh, I was started. I started when I could with him because he has a class he has to get to. Did Did you have any idea what I was talking about there? Yeah, no, I, I for sure got it. I was like, you know, um, you guys were talking about loop and that's one uh, shared notes loop. So I'm guessing we're doing what we did, like, what's it called? Uh, what we were doing with a game bot or a light bot. There, there you go. Where we would. Re, uh, repeat the function and he would do the same thing and as you did it you don't really have to type a lot what you did was you just typed in one thing but it would just keep on repeating afterwards going down the uh, fewer integers so that's what i got from the uh, lesson you guys yeah. are talking about let me go back to the to the little presentation because you missed the very beginning of it and i'll just sure. Make, sure, make sure that you see uh loops are basically a way to control things over and over again that's true and so 
a, there, there's always going to be something that a condition that we're keeping track of. So the idea that's supposed to be a camera in the background, it's kind of hard to see because mm -hmm. a lot of times we use cameras to keep track of what's going on. Yeah. I, when I was, I when, one of the places I worked, we, we actually did the security system out at O'Hare and we had cameras that were infrared and when it had an infrared spotlight built into it as well. So people would be out there, they'd back their vans up to the behind a building and they'd think they could rob it in total darkness and nobody would know, but this camera had an infrared spotlight on it. So it's bright as day. I mean, you could make out their facial features and their license plates and everything. So it's just technology. It's pretty amazing. But the idea of having a sentinel is that sometimes you'll let people through and sometimes you won't, but you're going to kind of watch like for credentials. So when the value is right, you let things through. And that's what you have to have in a loop is mm -hmm. some kind of a control value. So there's three parts and I like to color code them so that people can see them jump out a little bit. The first thing is some kind of an initialization, like for countdown, we use 10. And then there's a condition like, well, the countdown is above one or zero. And then every time you say something like in a countdown, you have to make the number lower in your mind, right? So that's, that's the increment. In this case, a decrement, it makes a change, some kind of change. So there's three types of loops. There's three parts of loops. So three works in here a couple different ways. But each C++ loop will have all three of these things. So expanding on the idea, these are different things you might initialize. I might say, let's start out with 27 type, um, in our ammo. I might say that the game is on. I might say that uh, the countdown we talked about. I might say, I want you to kill all the trolls in the room. So whatever that value is, that's how many you need to kill. That's, those are all different examples of initialization. The thing that's going to be happening, the sentinel value, if you will, the condition is, well, it's true. So, well, and this is backwards. It should be, well, zero is greater than well, zero is greater than ammo count. Oh, no, less than. Yeah, that's right. Well, yeah, so if you have ammo, you can do whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, the game is on. Well, you've killed, let's say, less than 200. Or, well, it's not game over. So this is just to help you realize that with a Boolean value set to true, like game on, some people will do that. Other people will say game over and then say not. It's almost like a double negative. And that's just how some people's brains work. Well, I think the game over or not game over is another way to make it more efficient, I guess. Because then you don't have to write another integer of saying game on. You could just say game over and use a double negative of what you just said. Yep. And they both work. And you'll see samples of both of them. So this idea of change in value could be making it go up or down. And these are these are four different ways that you could actually in C++ change a value. They all work. So let's go through them one at a time. This says into the variable called ammo, I'm going to assign whatever was in ammo, but I'm going to take away one. So if it mm -hmm. was 27, first I'll take away one, make it 26, and then I'll put that value. This is a shorthand operator. It's, it's, it may not be easy to see, but it's got minus equal. And what that means is I want you to take away and put back in there. Now, this is using one, but you could put in a different value like minus equal five or three. Whatever that value is, it's basically saying take that value, subtract it, and store it right back in the same variable. It's called a shorthand operator. So these both work with... Like you could have the value 10 here. You could have the value 3 here. These next two only work with 1. And you may have seen me demo a little bit of a difference between doing it after and doing it before. But the C++, either one of those lowers the value by just one value. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, within the three looping statements, Using my color coding, you could you could find the red, the orange, and the purple in each of these three different loops. 
I've got a sample out there that you're going to open in a little bit, and it's going to show you the three different loops, and you could find the condition, the initialization, and that change in each of them. So uh, an important thing to understand about the while loop is if it's not true to start with, if it's false already, you're not even gonna you're not even gonna go in there. So if the ammo is zero and you're doing a while loop, it won't let you shoot at all. You're done because it fits as while I've got ammo, let him shoot. Well, if he doesn't have ammo, it's just going to skip right over it. Mm -hmm. and there's an example of it. And the next one's called the do. The do lets it happen and then sees if, sees if it's still true. So this one's kind of funny with shooting because what it does is it would say bang and then see if he still has ammo. And if he's out of ammo, it, it would drop out. So this one would be bang, click. The other one would be click, click. The do loop is useful if you're going to want to make sure you go through the process at least one time. So good for initialization. So if you look here, you can see a, a while compared to a do. The do is going to do it first and then check. The while is going to say, ah, if it's not true at all, skip it. So there's a slight difference in how they are. So there's a do while. The third one is a for loop. And this one is my pref preference because all three parts are together in one line. You got the change, you got the condition, and the initialization all on one line. And it's very helpful if you have a lot of lines of code. But there are actually three small things happening within one line. These semicolons are important to note. There's a semicolon between these first two parts. And that's what works within the for structure <coughs> in the source code to say there's a breakup here and here's the next part. And then here's the next part. You mm -hmm. can't put them in a different order, but if you want to skip one, you just have a semicolon with nothing in the middle. So that's pretty much what I explained. And here is the whole structure put together in a for loop. You got the red, the orange, and the purple all happening together in one line. So stylistically, I prefer that myself. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I think this is just another like another picture of it. Uh, in games, you have a uh, you have a loop that can, repeats over and over again. And that could be uh, any one of those three. It basically, it, while the game is on, it'll do a number of things. Those statements might include checking for collisions, running artificial intelligence, uh, firing up particle systems and sounds, um, moving the players. Um, there's a whole bunch of things that happen. And then we start it all over again. And it continues 60 to 120 times a second. It just happens over and over again. So in, in lab today, your activity, and it's on Google Classroom, is to go in and play around with these pro, the sample program I gave you and set up all three loops. Okay? Okay. So what, basically what you were showing, um, oh, what's his name? Jacob. Uh, mm -hmm. Jacob a while ago, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the sample's out there. Google Classroom's got the assignment, and I'll be online if you have any questions. So do we have to like put it in a Google Doc or do we just have to do it, turn it, um, and then just say turn in to? You, you like, can give me a screen um, capture if you want to. Okay. Okay. Um, I did want to show you something I did. It was like last week when we were doing or ifs and um, the integer amounts and all. Sure. I basically made my own um, calculator. Okay, cool. I, I made you the presenter, so you can actually show me your screen whenever you want. If you look sure. at the bottom by your by your microphone, you can fire sure. that up. 